Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to go over how to calculate Bollinger Bands and how to chart them in Google Sheets. And the process is going to be the same for Excel. And so Bollinger Bands are helpful in measuring a stock's volatility and seeing when it's trading at one extreme or another. And so it uses um, standard deviations to help calculate those upper and lower bands to where most of the trading is going to occur for a stock. So in this example, I've got Meta's stock price going back to 2020. And one of the first fields I'm going to create is a 20-day moving average, which is typical for, for Bollinger Bands. So to get a 20-day moving average, all we really want to do is grab 20 data points. So see if I've grabbed 20 here. And on Google Sheets, it has an indicator telling you um, how many that is, just to double check. So I can use the average function and just grab those 20 last cells. And I'll copy this down. And since I haven't locked any cells, you'll notice this is average does in fact move. It's always going to be the trailing um, 20 periods. The next thing I'm going to do is calculate the standard deviation. And to do this, I'm using the STDEV function. And same thing, I'm going to grab the last 20 days and copy it down. And now the standard deviation is used to calculate the upper band and the lower band. So the upper band is going to be plus two standard deviations and the lower bands minus two standard deviations. So what I'm going to do is take the standard deviation, multiply it by two, and add the moving average. Copy it down. Same thing for the lower band. Take the standard deviation, except I'm going to multiply it by minus two this time and add that to that average. Copy it down, and now I'm ready to chart this data. So a line chart works best for this. Now the one thing that Google Sheets did not do is did not pick up my range in its entirety correctly. So I just want to update this. So I've got the close and also the moving average. So I've got the close, the moving average, the upper band, and the lower band. So as you can see, we've got all that data. And so we could all, we could change the highlighting of this just to put more emphasis on the closing price. So we can customize the look of this. So let's say the upper band, we can use maybe a, maybe a dash line for the lower band. Same sort of thing. And then for the 20-day moving average, maybe make this a bit lighter so it doesn't stand out as much. Right? So we can help highlight the more the closing price than uh, the 20-day moving average. So as you can see, the Bollinger Bands, you know, start to show you where that where there's a lot of volatility and where there isn't. So for instance, here we can see that there's there wasn't a lot of volatility, whereas in this period there was a significant amount. So you know, for traders, that's an opportunity. Obviously, large swings in, in the stock price versus narrow ones, where there may not be as many opportunities. There's these there's these breakouts that occur where the cl closing price jumped out of that upper band so there's all sorts of things that you can look for here to help you with uh, uh, doing technical analysis on a stock but as you can see it's a really easy process to chart out in uh, google sheets or in excel as you're really just using line charts to put that in and so once you've got the 20-day moving average all you're doing is just adding the two standard deviations to get the upper bound upper band and deducting two standard deviations to get to the lower band. And by doing so, you'll get a, a, a range of, of, of bands that you can, you can see where the bulk of the trading activity occurs and help identify when the stock's been very volatile, very stable, and also whether it's been at one extreme or the other. So hope you found that video useful and thank you very much for watching.